so it's one thing to agree that it's a good idea to make lead magnets and to even make these lead magnets, but now we have to learn how to distribute them or else it doesn't matter if we build them and they're very good, they're very valuable, actionable, and readable if no one ever sees them, right? That would make sense. So in the, pa in the past video, I went over what are lead magnets, why we need them, and how we make them. I'm just going to go into maybe a 30 second to one minute reminder here. So lead magnets are what we call the middle of funnel. We drive top of funnel traffic to the middle of funnel lead magnets. And these are usually something like checklists or guides or PDFs or cheat sheets or docs or eBooks or something of the matter where they give you their email in exchange for some piece of value. These lead magnets are bribes that you give in exchange for their contact information because if you don't give them anything, there's just no reason for them to sign up. They are a complete solution to a narrow problem and they automatically overcome objections at scale. So in this video, we're gonna go over, we distribute these lead magnets through paid ads and content to build our email list. And our email list size is going to be directly proportional to our revenue. Let's just go up here. Why we need lead magnets? Because there are a lot of different problems or objections that have to do with a service. So a YouTube channel, there's a lot of objections. How do I set up my camera and lights, making titles, making thumbnails, doing SEO, video ideas, scripts. I don't like how I talk or sound. These are all very real objections that someone would not, if someone didn't overcome these, they would not start a YouTube channel for their business. And YouTube is very difficult for this person in their mind. But you being the expert, you know how to solve all of these problems. And you need to put that knowledge from your brain into written form and video form in a lead magnet. And if you have a lead magnet that solves every single possible problem or objection, it becomes very natural for them to just say, well, my, I might as well just work with this guy. It's very natural or girl, of course. So that is the situation that you want to do by making all of these lead magnets. But if you only make one, which lots of people do, that's great. You solved their problem of setting up their camera and lighting in this example, but all of these other problems still exist and they're not buying from you. They're not grateful to you. They don't even remember your name. Probably they're looking for someone who can help all of these other problems and that someone could be your competitor. More lead magnets also means more chances to generate leads because for example, there's going to be a percentage of the market that doesn't have a particular problem. Like maybe there's going to be, let's say 30% of people in this example, if they don't have the problem of setting up a camera and lighting, they're not going to be interested in this and we're not going to capture that percentage of the market. We always want to follow the VAR formula. When we make our lead magnets, ask yourself when you make them, would I pay $50 for this? Is there an exact plan for them to implement within 24 hours to get their first few wins? And is there very readable? Is there one idea and one image per slide only? doesn't matter how valuable and actionable it is if it's not readable. And we all have seen those big walls of text type thing. So the format of this, I always do introduction, what they need to do, why they need to do it, how they need, how they can do it, exact step-by-step, -step, and then examples. Just a nice, easy way to think about it. The who, what, when, where, why, how, where who is obvious, you, when, now, where, at your desk. So we don't need to do that, but we can do the other stuff. So you need to figure out which objections there are. That's step one in this example, like this would be step one. We need to figure out a desirable way to format the lead magnet. And then in this video, when we go over how to distribute it in ads and content, we need to think of the best way to sell it because that really matters. There's an old story about how a book was not selling any copies. They changed the title and it becomes a bestseller. I'm sure there's lots of cases of that and it's the same with your lead magnet. So I just went over an example of how to do this in the last video on my channel. I'm not going to do that now because that's not what this video is about. Let's get into it. How do we distribute our lead magnets? How do we get them in front of people so they actually download it? How do we get them to a page like this where they see it, put their email address in and join our list? That is what this video is going to be about. So circle the lead magnets and we distribute them through paid ads and content typically. Sometimes you can do it through cold email, but you kind of got to have a very specific strategy for that. So I'm not going to go over that in this video, but I drew this one here with all these lines to signify 
the correct thinking because you should be promoting every single one of your lead magnets at all times. Or if you're going to, if you don't, if you just, because it's very easy to check which campaign's doing the best and just only run that campaign in Facebook. But if you do one or even two, you're going to end up with this kind of situation when you want to end up with this kind of situation. Eventually, you want people to view each and every single one of your lead magnets. So that is why I drew it like this to signify, you know, the content going to each one and then the paid ads going to each one. And then they all end up in the same place. That's not as important. But what is, is ooh, that was a terrible line there. What is important is that we promote all of them at the same time. It doesn't necessarily have to be 100% evenly, but it has to be where we actually do all of them. So what we need, like this is the stuff you need in order to do this. So we need to have our lead magnet. That would be nice. We need to have our landing page. That is what we need to do. We need to have a thank you page. So an example of a thank you page, I'll go over in a sec. We need to have a flow that delivers the lead magnet. Let's not put the check marks here yet. We need to have a flow or an email that delivers the lead magnet. We have to have a master welcome flow, which begins to nurture them once they're already on the lead magnet where they have downloaded the lead magnet. We need a conversion mechanism signup page. In a lot of cases, these will be the same page. Not always, but in a lot of cases. We need an ad account and a content scheduler app. So Facebook ad account and then something like Hype Fury, for example, for content. And then we need our ad creatives. So let's go right into it. So let's go here and let's, let me open this lead magnet. Probably should have done that before the video was started recording, but that's life, I guess. So this is the lead magnet that is referenced in this image here. So this would be the landing page. And this is this page. I took pictures of some stuff. I could open stuff, but that's fine. So they would, this is my lead magnet. It follows the VAR formula quite well. It's valuable, it's actionable, and there's very readable. You see, practicing what I preach, one image and one idea per slide, not all together. It's very important, very important. So we have the lead magnet. We have the landing page. So what would the thank you page be? Let's say they put their email in here and click download. This is not my thank you page, but this is an example of a different thank you page that Taylor Welch does for his Facebook group. So this would be an example to let's go, let's just use this one. Um, let's, let's delete some stuff here just so we can draw the sequence. Like what are we doing here? So let's get a pen. So this would be an example of you're going to this lead magnet. They've downloaded the lead magnet or they signed up for it. They're added to the flow. Now they're redirected to the thank you page. And remember what I said about the thank you page and the conversion mechanism page often being the exact same thing. Because when they download this, they're going to be redirected to this page. And that is an example of a community or a group funnel. Oops, wrong one here. So basically, this is how it's going from here, group, and then in the group, you would decide whether they're qualified or unqualified. And if they're qualified, of course, you'd eventually get to a, a sales call, hopefully. So that is an example of what I'm doing right here. I read a paid ad to my content lead magnet, added to the email flows, and on the thank you page, it promotes the conversion mechanism, which is a community in this case. And that community is the tool you would use to build a relationship, talk to people, see who's qualified, and unqualified. So let's do thank you page and also conversion mechanism sign up page. Now we need a lead magnet delivery flow. So I just took a picture of my convert kit because it's just, it's not hard, but you need to set it up right. So you'd have something like this, and this would be in any email service provider. You'd set up something like this, but this is convert kit. So you'd have your form, right? So this is a very specific form. This is content form in my convert kit. So this, okay, let's do it on the proper one. This is content form. So basically what this means is if they sign up for this form, they will sign up for a specific email flow that delivers the content. Let me just open her up here or a sequence, I guess it's called. So if they do that, they're going to be in this flow right here. So hi, it's Matthew Larson here. I'm emailing you to deliver your free content plan. Very important that you write this down 
in these emails, we want them to do three things, at least two, maybe three, if, but the three is kind of like, uh, in a specific situation. One, we want them to click a link, any link, but in this case, the lead magnet delivery link, and this will open the same thing here. You can see the URL is the same. We want them to reply to the email because they reply to the email. That's a very good deliverability domain authority indicator for Google and Microsoft and Yahoo, the things like the spam filters. And then if if it goes into their email, we want, or if it goes into their spam or junk, we want to get them to put it into their main folder. So those are the three things we want. Very simple. Don't go crazy because the longer the email is, the less likely they're going to see like this thing and reply to it. And replying to it is very, very strong for multiple different reasons. So that would be like this. So it just connects it to one simple email sequence that has one email in it. But then, so let's go here. We've got the lead magnet delivery flow. But, and the reason we do this to back up a little bit is because we can't just put all of the lead magnets in a single email, right? We only want them to get the one they signed up for and we can't have like 12 different links in this one because that's just weird. And we want them to go through this process and sign up to all of them because the more they go through a process and the more downloads they do, there's a big difference between them getting everything at once and them going individually multiple times to do it from a psychological standpoint. So what we have to do here is we have a, a different flow or a different visual automation it's called in ConvertKit is if they sign up for any form at all. So I have 12 lead magnets. If they sign up for any single one of these forms, they're added to the master sequence. But the thing is, it's just delayed one hour to account for the, you know, they have delivered the lead magnet type thing. So this would be del delivered immediately. This would be delayed an hour and then the master flow would start. And that's how that would work. It's very, uh, it's just a technical part of setting it up, but it has to be done. So for our Facebook ad account, like this is what we need. And we'd also need Hype Fury or something. Hype Fury can post on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram and Facebook for you. So it's just a nice scheduling tool. So let's just say we have that. And then we need ad creatives. I made some ad creatives here. And I think these sticky note type ad creatives that you could do on your iPhone are a great way to start. Just because they stand out well in the feed. They're, you know, you don't need a designer for them. You can make them very, very quickly. You can make, you know, 60 of these in an hour. It doesn't take more than a minute to make each one. So we need to add creatives and we need to think of it as on the, on the headline, it's, you know, a, either a testimonial based headline or a desired result. So the, the headline is what grabs the attention and gives them like what the result they're going to achieve. And then the bullet points will tell them how they're going to achieve the result. So the thing to understand here is we need ad creatives for every single one. So if you see the here, I have 12 lead magnets for a thousand X leads program, and I have 12 campaigns. I have one for every single one. I'm practicing what I preach here. And each one goes to a landing page of its own like this, for example, hopefully I remember my URLs, but you know, I could open them all up like this and they would all have their own landing page. So you can see the text is different. You can see what everything's different. So each one of these would go to their own landing page and each one of them has their own visual automation connector thing. So we need to make ads for each of them. And the thing is that I like to do is even if you're a, an, a veteran advertiser, you don't really like when you're first starting out, you're kind of guessing at best as to what is going to work and what's not. So what I usually do is, choose my bullet points and they're all going to be the same mostly, but then I just do make like five or six different versions of my headline for every single lead magnet. So if I have 12, that's going to be 72 ads total. And I just do that for the purpose of, you know, you never know what's going to work. You, when you're starting, put in five or six different ones and see which one gets the most and then build off that one instead of just doing one at a time. And hopefully you get the right one. So in terms of the actual, you know, ad creatives here. What I typically is going to do is I only target the United States with ads, uh, English speaking, 
sometimes I'll target men only because just that is kind of who my target audience is. That's typical. There's not really many um, girls at a thousand X leads so so far, but and I might also do like twenty five plus. But it, it all depends on what you want to do. It's your target audience. The thing that I don't do is any targeting for interests because I don't really believe in that, so to speak. The thing about interests is, let's take, let's do something to the effect of Ford trucks. If you target the interest of Ford trucks, 33% of people will like Ford trucks who have that interest. 33% of them will hate Ford trucks. They're tagged on it because they just talk trash about Ford trucks or whatever. And then 33% are probably indifferent or mistagged. So in my opinion, and then people can disagree or agree, when you are using interests like that, it's a matter of, you know, in my view, you're not getting the full, the full target, total addressable market, the whole estimated audience size. Because let's just say there's like 85 million people here and you did Ford Motor Company. It's gone down to 20 million people. You can't really tell me personally that there's 60 million people like if that 60 million estimated audience size that decreased that not one of them likes Ford trucks in there. Like that's just my, how I think of it, how my opinion and the algorithm on Facebook in particular is so good that you run your pixel, it'll find the right people over time. First month or two might be non ideal, but as you get, you know, a thousand, 2000, 10,000 subscribers through this, it's going to have pretty laser focused targeting. In addition to that, I'm, a thing I believe in quite heavily is that the ad will make the audience or the ad will determine the audience. For example, let's go something like this. Hmm, which one should we do here? Let, let's go deeper into our thing here. Let's try to zoom in here. So this is what I mean by this. Oh, zoomed in way too much. If if you, oh my God, I got to zoom out a little bit. Hopefully you can see it. If you don't have any interest in building a personal brand or creating videos or coming up with content ideas or turning followers into clients like addressed in this ad here, like, it's not attractive to you. It's not appealing. There's no reason for you to download it in many ways. And you can even get more granular than this in calling out your target audience. You could be, here's the number one strategy for e-commerce stores doing one to 5 million a year to get to 10 to 20 million a year. In that situation, if you are in a thousand X leads and you're running ads, like there's no reason for someone who's not a Shopify store to download it. There's no reason for someone who's not in the one to $5 million range and so on. You can really get very detailed in calling out your target audience and really, really um, do that because to some degree with personal brand, if you don't want to get 15 clients in the next 30 days, like there's no real reason to, to do that. Right. That's what I mean by the ad makes the audience. So we got all of the stuff we need for now. We need our lead magnets, our landing page, our thank you page, our lead magnet delivery flow and our master welcome flow. And that is the eight steps we need for paid ads. So if we go back over here, like this is like, this is what we have done basically in this example here. We have gone like this. Let me kind of duplicate this so because I can show you with content after. So let me, oh, 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 just kind of ruining it here. Okay. I, uh, embarrassing, embarrassing. So this is what we have done here. Basically, we have a campaign to each and every single one of our lead magnets. Our lead magnets are filled with affiliate links to try and get us some revenue. And we have a situation where we're advertising to all lead magnets. They're added to our flows. They are on the thank you page, which both promote a community in this example, even though these are two very separate things, not this, not both mine. And this is completely different. Like that is an example of how it would work. 
So the thing that you really want to keep in mind with like the conversion mechanism sign up, like let me pull up this page. I can't remember. I think, yeah, I think it's this page. Whereas when you're doing your paid ads, and this is going to be different from content, that's why I'm pulling it out or bringing it up here. Like this subscriber form, right? You're running paid ads. So you only want to ask in my view for the email address because you want it to be as low friction as possible. You are spending money to get leads, right? You need, you don't, for every field, name, phone number, website, your cost per lead is going to basically double. Like if this was getting $1 cost per lead for just the subscribe form, it'd probably be $3 if you ask for name, email, and phone number. So because it's paid ads and we need our economics to be right in some ways, we need to have as low friction as possible. So the thing that like, that's fine, right? But to qualify people, we kind of need their name, their website, their revenue, that kind of stuff. So to counteract the fact we can only get our email address here, or we only should, like you would ask for this, most of this stuff to get in the group. So that's how you would come over. That would, that's how you would basically overcome your lack of data by, you know, doing it in two different steps instead of all asking for it in the front. They've already committed to you. You know, they want the more extra value in the group. You know, they might as well do that, right? So it's very, very important. So I think at this point, we've covered the paid ads part. And we've covered like why you need to do this and stuff. So now we have to focus on the content part. So I'm going to change my change my color here just to make it obvious. Maybe I'll change that back and circle this just so we can see we know what we're doing here. So the difference between content and paid ads in this purpose is things like paid ads, content, cold or uh, outreach are all cold traffic, top of funnel traffic. But content is a little less cold, so to speak, than outreach because if they've if they're going to your lead magnets based on your content, they've probably watched a video or seen a LinkedIn post or seen a Twitter post or maybe multiple or maybe Instagram posts. So they're a bit warmer, so to speak, than they would be in paid ads. And because of this, we have to do, we have to keep in mind a couple of things. The first thing is that, where are we here? We can ask for more information because they are warmer, because they want stuff from us. But if we're going to ask for more information, we should probably give them more too, instead of just the, just the one thing that they're trying to get or whatever. Let me zoom out a little bit on this. Instead of just one of these things, why don't we give them all 12 on the content part, but we're going to ask for their name, email, phone number, website, and revenue, or whatever you determine, right? And the reason why we want to do that is because it's very easy to, well, it's very reasonable for us to just make these 12 campaigns and distribute the traffic easily. But when we're posting stuff, we have to, like, when someone's looking at your content, right, they are, there's no guarantee they're going to see every, like, if you, you'd have to rotate through these lead magnets is what I'm saying with your content. And there's no guarantee someone is going to see all of them and click on all of them over time. That would take a lot of different, like a lot of content, a lot of luck for them to see it all. And a lot of, you know, them going to your site and downloading it over and over and over. And there's no guarantee that they will do that, but we need them to do that. Or else we're going to run into this kind of situation here, right? With, with our, with our paid ads, it's very easy to just make a campaign for all of these, but with the with the content, it's not that straightforward. We're relying on people to see it, the algorithm to show it to them, them caring enough to take action. So we need to make sure they get all of the lead magnets or so we're not going to get any clients from it. So the easiest way to do it is to just add, to just give them all of it like we're doing here, like we're doing on this page, not that page, this page. But we're going to ask for more stuff because they're willing to give their name and email and phone number and website and revenue or whatever you put on the form to a much larger degree because they trust you more than they do from paid ads. From paid ads, it's just kind of an ad. For here, they've read your thoughts or your content or seen your profile or whatever. So there's a much 
bigger degree of trust that is there when with paid ads, not really the case. And we also have to do this out of necessity because we need them to get all of our lead magnets. So we don't have a choice is what I'm basically saying here. So what you might do to promote this stuff is like you put stuff in Hype Fury or whatever tool you use, and you might promote all 12 of these every single day. So I made 12 trainings that you know are better than $10,000 courses you pay for, and you might just promote the link to all of them every single day. So in that case, it might be this link, and this link would have its own separate delivery email. And if you want to see mine, because I always like to prove that I do what I say in these videos instead of just telling you to do it. Here's mine, you know, literally. Here's my, here's all the lead magnets I have just in case, like, cause this button seems to not work for people. That's why I have it like there. So they have the lead magnet for every single one. And that's how I distribute it through content, um, that kind of stuff. If you, cause you're probably watching on YouTube and if you've joined my list, like a lot of the time I've made you know, people come on it from YouTube. I've made 12 full trainings better than most courses right at the top of the description. And I put it in the pinned comment as well. And there's an example of it in the wild because we need to show that we do what we preach, right? So, so there's the lead magnets, there's the video, there's the content. And a lot of people, maybe even you, you know, find out about me personally. Let's choose a different color, like from YouTube, at least right now. And then YouTube goes to that thing, which gives them all of the lead magnets. And then it just keeps going. Let's just draw there, even though it should be obvious, but it's, who knows? So that is like how YouTube works for me in my particular funnel, the video that you're watching right now. So let's wrap up the video with one thing, and that is our paid ad metrics, because it's fine to tell you to make lead magnets. It's fine to tell you to run ads for them, but what are we going for here? So in my view, and this is, to clarify before I get into it, this is email only from Facebook ads. We need to get, and you probably won't get it at the start, to be honest, because it's it's simple. It's not easy. If everybody was doing it, then it would get, you know, then everybody would be rich, right? But you want to get $1 or less cost per lead goal using Facebook ads. And what I would do is I would completely try new concepts until you find something that's maybe $2 cost per leader better and then optimize. If you launch your campaigns and it's just like, you're getting like a $7 cost per lead. It's just, there's no way to improve or optimize from $7 down to $1. So you should just try something completely different is what I'm getting at. We want to get a 70% opt-in rate. So for every 100 people that go to this landing page, we want 70 of them to, or more to opt in. And if that's, if you're not getting this, try adding like social proof, try adding a new headline, try doing X, Y, and Z. It's very possible. Trust me. It's not, I'm not telling you to do anything that's not realistic or not unrealistic here. So we to get this, like as a function of just basic, or basic math, if we want to get a 70 cent cost per lead and we have 70% opt-in rate, we need to get a 70 cent or less cost per click. A lot of people will tell you to ignore cost per click, especially e-commerce people. And it's, that might be easier to some degree in e-commerce, but for this, it is mathematically impossible to get $1 less cost per lead and a 70% opt-in rate. If we have a dollar 25 cost per click, it's just, just math. So let's just take my word for it. If it's not less, it's not 70 cents or less then it's not going to give you a $1 cost per lead. We want to get a 30% or more, let's go 30% plus subscriber to conversion mechanism rate. So in this case, the amount of people who sign up for this to who actually activate and enter the group in this situation, we want that to be 30% or more because it's not going to be hundred percent. Trust me. 30% is a good benchmark because you can really, if you convert like 2%, oh, there's not a, that's just really advanced math that I'm not going to do here. So if one in every 500 of these people become clients that would indicate, and it's a dollar cost per lead each, that would basically indicate you have a $500 cost customer acquisition cost or cost per acquisition. So if you can do this at, and it's very stable and you can, you can 
ignore the five hundred dollar CPA. If you can do this over time and collect data and and say with confidence that you're getting X CPA, you can scale your ads quite a bit. Because if you know that you're getting five hundred dollar CPA and your let's just make keep it simple, your gross like lifetime net margin is five thousand dollar lifetime value net margin lifetime value or something like that let's just say that is that's indicating a 10x return on ad spend right it's not going to be you know instant because there's it's not like e-commerce not instant like e-com but there because there's a sales cycle of course but it still is true it's just sales cycle 30 60 90 days or even more so you would have to project cash flow of course because you don't want to bankrupt yourself but this is a this is how you scale ads for an agency you gotta get a funnel like this you gotta find out you gotta get a low cost per lead you got to find out like what is the actual conversion rate of people who sign up for something like this to who eventually become clients if that's a thousand dollar, if that's one in a thousand and it's two dollar cost per lead, then you have a two thousand dollar CPA. In this case, that might be fine because you have five thousand dollar net margin. This is an ideal scenario, and you're probably not going to get it the first time, but stick with it. Um, you can make progress really quickly in paid ads, so it's just a matter of doing it. And then let's go back to let's do two things here just to illustrate the doing this let's not do that actually so doing this so overall let's do this quick the content will get clients which lowers your blended cpa right if you at a $500 or one in 500 become clients, $500 CPA, but one in every 500 who come in from content also become clients. That basically lowers your CPA to 250 and it makes it more reasonable because content typically doesn't have a cost. You need to do content. You need to do content as well, not just paid ads. Content makes paid ads ads more effective and what i mean by that is if you run paid ads and you have a blank profile and they click on it they're less likely to trust you than if they click on a blank profile or click on your profile from your ad and they see tons and tons and tons of content or your email flow directs to your youtube like the content is a very big part of the paid ads even though a lot of people will tell you inaccurately that you should just pick one and focus on it. it all works together if you if we take out the marker paid ads and content make each other more effective if you're running paid ads and content and you all start reaching out manually to the same person whether that's through cold email or through like an appointment setter type thing that makes it even more effective we need it all it's not you know, the paid ads is the drums, the content is the guitar, the outreach is the singer, the partnerships is the bass player. You can make each of these great on their own, but in real life, the band plays together. It's not how good each part is, it's how they work together. And it's very, very important that you have all of this as well. So in this, the last thing I want to do is make sure to have an appointment setter to reach out to all of these leads that you're getting because you have their in this example like and in the group one you have their name their phone number their email address their website their revenue there's no reason you can't have an appointment setter emailing them texting them calling them to do it like these three things are going to make your ads 100 percent or not even 100 times more effective than if they weren't there so I, hopefully this video was helpful um i'm going to make more videos like it every single day and i'll see you in the next one